charger. In my seat? Huh? Because you sat in my seat. <laughs> One other, always up there every time. A lot of announcements today, a lot of proclamations. Oh, hello. That's why my microphone is on. Again last week. Lamar family. It's a great thing. Right, but that's Fred Lamar. But President Obama didn't want to talk about Fred Lamar. He keeps wanting to go on. You have he just he keeps wanting to like do like a vacation. Mubarak, and Michelle, and Barack. I'm like, guys, you're great, but it's not like Good evening. I'm going to call this meeting of the Durham City Council to order at 7 o'clock on November the 19th, 2018. I want to certainly want to welcome everyone here tonight. We're very, very glad to have you with us. And first, I'll hope you'll join me in a moment of silent meditation. Thank you. And now I ask Council Member Reese to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Tonight we are joined by Boy Scout Troop 424, chartered by Immaculate Conception Catholic Parish. They're going to come up and help us with the pledge. Uh, they're led today by um, uh, Senior Assistant City Attorney Fred Lamar. He's in uniform. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Thank you, council member. Thank you, Boy Scouts. Good job. And thank you, Boy Scout leader, Fred Lamar. We like seeing you in this uh, different role. Welcome. And now I will ask our city clerk to please call the roll. Here. And here. here. Councilmember Alston. Here. 
Councilmember Caballero. Here. Councilmember Freeman. Present. Councilmember Middleton. Here. And Councilmember Reese. Here. Good evening, everyone. We have some uh, several ceremonial items tonight uh, that I'm, I'm delighted about. Uh, we've really got some wonderful, wonderful ceremonial items tonight. And uh, I'm going to begin uh, by calling the, uh, the family of Dillard Tier up to join me. Uh, we have a proclamation honoring Dillard Tier. So would the members of the family please come up. I'm going to read this uh, proclamation, uh, and uh, then I'll be uh, presenting it to the Tier family, and Rob, you or others may have a comment that you'd like to make. Proclamation memorializing Dillard Tier. Whereas Dillard Tier, one of Durham's most distinguished business and civic leaders, passed away on October 5th, 2018, survived by his wife of 76 years and high school sweetheart, Mildred Roycroft Tier, and his large and loving family. Before I go on, I realize I should, I should introduce this a little bit differently. Before I just read the proclamation, what I want to say is, Durham lost an incredible, incredible citizen. I'm about to read you about his life, but I don't want to, I, that's the way I really want to start. We lost an amazing citizen of Durham, and when you hear the story of this life, as I've tried to capture it in this proclamation, and I took much of it from some of the things that you all had written about him. You will see the amazing life that we are memorializing tonight. So, okay. That's the way I really wanted to start. Forgive me. So, let me do that again. Whereas Dillard Tier, one of Durham's most distinguished business and civic leaders, passed away on October 5th, 2018, survived by his wife of 76 years, and high school sweetheart, Mildred Roy Croft Tier, and his large and loving family. And whereas Dillard Tier was born in Durham on May 12, 1920, and in 1940 actively joined his father's firm, the Nello L. Tier Company, which launched hundreds of major projects during and following World War II and grew to be one of the nation's largest construction companies under the leadership of himself, his father, and his brother. And whereas Dillard Tier's first assignment with Tier Company was as assistant project manager on the new Raleigh-Durham Airport site in 1941, thus beginning a lifelong love of aviation and RDU which led to his 31 years of service on the Raleigh-Durham Airport Authority, including seven years as its chairman. And whereas the original RDU tower, astonishingly small by today's standards, was moved to his farm in Durham County and sits 40 feet in the air as an overlook to the pond and pastures. And whereas during the World War II years, the Tier Company had a major role in preparing the country for the war effort, and Dillard was actively engaged. In 1942, he was assistant project manager during the construction of Camp Butner, 15 miles north of Durham, where thousands of U.S. Army troops trained, and he was supervisor of construction of a Marine base near Edenton, a naval air base in Beaufort, South Carolina, I guess they pronounce it Beaufort down there, and an Air Force training base in Danville, Virginia. And whereas over the years, the Tier Company's major projects included airports, dams, and highways, including many segments, segments of the Blue Ridge Parkway, sections of the interstate highway system, and primary highways through Central America, plus highways in Tanzania and an airport in Malawi as well as numerous commercial buildings throughout the country. And whereas Dillard Tier served as a Durham County Commissioner for four years, was active with the Durham Chamber of Commerce for more than 70 years, including as its president. And whereas Dillard Tier was a lifelong member of Duke Memorial United Methodist Church, where he served as chairman of its board of trustees for many years, was a master mason and a shriner for more than 60 years, belonged to the Durham Kiwanis Club for 60 years, was a member of the Durham County General Hospital Board of Trustees, served on the board of the Triangle J Council of Governments, was president of Durham's United Way, served on the board of Durham's Child Guidance Clinic from 1957 to 1974, and as its president for seven years, served on the board of the Methodist Retirement Home for 22 years, and was active with the YMCA for many years and helped establish Camp Kanata. And whereas Dillard Tier gave time and effort to education throughout his life, serving on the Methodist University Board of Trustees for 32 years, serving on the board of North Carolina Central University for eight years, and the NC College of Veterinary Medicine for 14 years. And whereas Dillard Tier's family honored him by naming the stage of the Durham Performing Arts Center the Mildred and Dillard Tier stage, and the governor of North Carolina honored him, honored him in April 2011 with the Order of the Longleaf Pine for service to the state. 
and whereas throughout all his productive business and community years, Dillard was always first and foremost a family man, living at his home on Beverly Drive for more than 50 years and always enjoying best the company of his children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. And whereas, with the passing of Dillard Tear, Durham has lost one of its most distinguished citizens and favorite sons, who contributed enormously to building the physical environment and the strong civic institutions we enjoy in Durham today. Now, therefore, I, Stephen M. Shule, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim the 19th of November, 2018, as Dillard Tear Day in the City of Durham, and do recommend its observance to all of the residents of this city in honor of his memory and good deeds. Witness my hand in the corporate seal of the City of Durham, North Carolina, this 19th day of November, 2018. For some special memorial proclamations like this, we uh, produce, and thank you to the clerk's office for producing a really beautiful memorial plaque. And so I want to present this, Rob, to you and to the members of the family. Uh, and if you would like to offer us a few words, that would be great. Look it up. I'm going to put it back to you. Give this to you. Thank you, Mayor Shule and members of the city council, Mr. Bonfield, Patrick. Patrick left. Uh, Daddy was all about love in Durham. His 98 years here, he never had a day that he didn't love or think about Durham. We miss him terribly, uh, but we appreciate you all thinking about him and doing this memorial today, and hope you have a nice Thanksgiving. Thank you. All right. Our second uh, proclamation tonight is for the Durham, North Carolina chapter of the Lynx Incorporated, and Desiree Palmer, I believe, is here, and uh, the chapter president for the North Carolina Durham chapter of the Lynx. And if you and the members of the Lynx would like to come up, that would be fantastic. Whereas the Lynx Incorporated, an international not-for-profit corporation established in 1946, consisting of nearly 15,000 professional men, professional women of color in 288 chapters located in 41 states, the District of Columbia, Commonwealth of the Bahamas, and United Kingdom. And whereas the Durham chapter of the Lynx Incorporated was inducted into the national body as the 77th chapter in October 11, 1958, and has served the Durham community for the, more than half a century volunteering 31,920 service hours in Durham in the last 10 years with a market value of more than a half million dollars. And whereas for 60 years, members of the Durham chapter have worked to improve the well-being of Durham citizens through leadership, philanthropy, and service, and have demonstrated a legacy of stepping up and stepping into leverage their collective resources to provide opportunities for others. And whereas members of the Durham, North Carolina <coughs> chapter are accomplished community leaders who support the local Durham economy, hold positions of power as business owners, lawyers, educators, dentists, physicians, and corporate leaders, serve on boards of nonprofits and public organizations as trustees and as trustees of foundations, and share their expertise, professional skills, and financial wealth with nonprofits, congregations, faith-based, and community organizations. And whereas in 1991, the chapter was the first black group and the first women's organization to sponsor a Habitat for Humanity house and invited their spouses to volunteer for this interracial partnership project with the Eno River Unitarian Universalist Church. And whereas the leadership and community impact of the Durham, North Carolina chapter, the Lynx, has been acknowledged and awarded in many ways. In 2008 and 2010, the Ford Foundation awarded the chapter $100,000 grants to document the Lynx community philanthropy. Now, therefore, I, Stephen M. Shule, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby recognize Durham, North Carolina chapter of the Lynx Incorporated in the City of Durham, and hereby call upon residents of Durham to celebrate 60 years of dedicated service to the Durham community and the Lynx Incorporated, and that we extend sincere congratulations to the Durham, North Carolina chapter of the Lynx Incorporated for the collaborative, award-winning programs, initiatives, and community service and volunteer efforts. Witness my hand in the corporate seal of the City of Durham, North Carolina, this 
the 19th day of, of November, 2018. <laughs> and Ms. Palmer, if you would like to come forward, and here is a, the, uh, the proclamation, and we'd love to hear a few words. Okay. Thank you. Mayor Shule, uh, city council members, citizens of Durham, on behalf of the Durham, North Carolina chapter of the Lynx Incorporated, we certainly appreciate you recognizing our 60 years of leadership, friendship, philanthropy, and service to this community. Thank you. You back there. Okay. Okay. Great. So, isn't it fantastic? We have, thank you, Ashley. We have recognized two already in these two proclamations some amazing service over many years to the Durham community, and it's it's just great to have all of you all here. The third of our uh, presentations tonight uh, is another uh, is continues this emphasis on recognizing service, and that's the Neighborhood Spotlight Award. And I'm going to ask Councilmember Javier Caballero to join me uh, at, the, uh, at the podium here uh, to present the neighbor spotlight. And I'm going to ask Charlita E. Burris of the Edgemont Elms community to please come forward. And Ms. Burris, uh, if you have family members or friends you'd like to come with you, bring them on. Please come up, everybody. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Charlita B. E. Burris is the recipient of the Neighbor Spotlight for the month of November 2018. The Neighbor Spotlight Award recognizes community members that have gone above and beyond in volunteering their time to serve the community. This month, Charlita Burris, a resident of the Edgemont Elms community, was nominated and selected because of the wonderful work she has done in her neighborhood, including, but not limited to, leading efforts to increase community involvement and encourage neighbors to get to know each other, hosting successful neighborhood events, including a fall festival and Christmas toy drive, coordinating efforts to support homeless populations, including turkey basket and blanket giveaways. Congratulations, congratulations Ms. Barres, on be being the November Neighbor Spotlight for the City of Durham, and thank you for all the work you do to improve the, our Durham community. And we have a whole bunch of folks here, so thank you all. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, y'all can do better than that. It's a lot of y'all in here. <laughs> I would like to say uh, greetings to the mayor and uh, to the city manager, pro tem, and everybody. I'm very humbled to uh, receive this award. I've just been in Durham three years. I'm encouraged by my son who's been here a long time. Listen, I have a word that was given to me when I first came to this area. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. <laughs> so a lot of people are talking about things, but they're not being about it. So I congratulate all of y'all that have already received congratulations for the things that you've done. I do what I do because it comes from the heart, not just from the mouth. You notice I'm limping. I had surgery in January. So if I can do something and I just had surgery, imagine those that have not had surgery. But my heart goes out to the homeless. My mother here is 90 years old. And they just came all the way from Washington, D.C. This is mom. She's 90. <laughs> and her mom lived to be 100. So that's, that's, this is my goal. This is my encouragement. I'm grateful to Jacob Lerner, who keeps me on tabs with uh, emailing me. So I'm going to tell the city council, if y'all 
see me or, or I come to your office. I'm not going to always want something. I like to make it laugh. <laughs> so I just might come and call you and make it laugh. Please return my phone calls. <laughs> Please. I know you got some blockers sometime, you know, that wanna, don't want to return phone calls. Please return my calls. You know, but, but I am elated and I'm grateful for everything that, that you've done. And I'm, I'm going to take this reward and I'm going to keep moving and keep, keep moving. For the next two days, I got to give a shout out to Community Health Coalition because they are helping me feed 15 families for the next two days. Thank you. Can I take this now? Oh. <laughs> Make a good one. I might be a millionaire one day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mary. Good to see you. All right. Thank you for that, Council Member and Ms. Burris. It's wonderful to be able to honor you tonight. We're really pleased to have you. And now we have another wonderful uh, recognition. Uh, and I'm going to ask Danielle Berman and those others who are here from Book Harvest uh, to please come forward and join me up here. Greg. All right. This is a very special proclamation as well. Uh, it's, it's a really momentous occasion, uh, and you will hear about it. You'll, you'll, you'll know what I mean when you, when you hear this. We're honoring uh, uh, one of our great nonprofits tonight, Book Harvest, for a special reason. Whereas Book Harvest believes in the limitless potential of all children and the power of parents to help children achieve their goals, and whereas Book Harvest believes that books are essential to children's healthy development and well-being, and that all children deserve to grow up in book-rich homes and communities. And whereas Book Harvest removes barriers to book ownership, fueling a lifelong love of reading among Durham's children that will enable success in school and life, and whereas Book Harvest is committed to providing high-quality, high-interest, diverse books in which all children can see themselves and their lives reflected, and whereas Book Harvest has partnered with Durham families, schools, and community organizations for over seven years, and whereas Book Harvest has just provided its one millionth free book to a child in Durham. Now, therefore, I, Stephen M. Shul, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim the month of November 2018 as Book Harvest Millionth Book Month in the City of Durham, and hereby encourage and call upon the citizens of Durham to observe same. Witness my hand in the corporate seal of the City of Durham, North Carolina, this, the 19th day of November 2018. And now, uh, Daniel, would you like to say a few words to us? Thank you, Mayor Shul. Thank you, City Council members, for celebrating with us, many of you who are familiar to Book Harvest. I will just share that those million books were all donated by our community. So this is really a celebration of our entire community and our support for our kids. So thank you to our whole community of Durham. Appreciate it. It's quite an achievement. And now, finally tonight, we are going to have another special recognition. Uh, this, I'm going to ask Bob Klaus, the general manager of the Durham Performing Arts Center, uh, to come up, and uh, we will talk about uh, the uh, recognition that the theater has recently received. Thank you, Mayor. Good to see you, Bob. Uh, Deepak was uh, recently recognized with two very prestigious awards, and I'd like to share these with council tonight, with the mayor, with city staff, and with the citizens of Durham. It's my hope that Durham takes pride in these awards because they signify not only that DPAC is a pl great place to visit, but that Durham is a great place to visit. On October the 2nd, the International Entertainment Buyers Association named DPAC as its Theater of the Year. This association is made up of agents, managers, venue managers, promotion companies, and others involved in live entertainment, not only across America, but across the world. 
We were honored to be nominated with other larger cities such as Chicago, Los Angeles, Houston, and uh, Washington, D.C., and even New York City. When DPAC won, I was most happy for DPAC's exceptional, exceptional staff and volunteers. The real stars at DPAC are those that welcome our guests with warmth, friendliness, and the attention to detail that have really become hallmarks of the legendary DPAC experience. And if that wasn't enough, then on October 22nd, excuse me, the 29th, the North Carolina Travel Industry Association awarded DPAC with its Visitor Attraction of the Year Award for North Carolina. This award signifies a North Carolina visitor attraction that exemplifies excellence and sets the standard for an exceptional visitor experience. Mayor Shule, on behalf of Nederlander and PFM, the operators of DPAC, I would like to present these awards to the city of Durham. Thank you so much, Bob. Uh, I just want to say to Bob, you have done a fabulous job uh, since day one at DPAC uh, as the general manager and uh, so much of the success of the theater uh, belongs to you and, of course, as you said, to the wonderful staff who you have. But I just want to thank you so much for your leadership. It's been an example. All right, I believe that is the last of our ceremonial items, but what an awesome night of ceremony uh, uh, dedicated to the service of members of our community and to this fabulous theater of which we're all so proud. All right, uh, and now I'm going to uh, ask if there are announcements by members of the council. And uh, first I will call on council member Mark Anthony Middleton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, colleagues, and good evening to all of you. I want to continue uh, in the spirit of the award tour uh, that we're on tonight. Um, all of us in Durham know that we are a city on the ascent. And if you look up across the landscape of our nation, at any list of a city that's doing big things, Durham is always on that <coughs> list. I had the great honor of being in California on last week to attend the National League of Cities City Summit. Uh, elected leaders from all over America gather to do workshops and network and talk about best practices and ways that we can improve our cities. But they also hand out a few awards. So I attended a dinner by the Center for Digital Government that hands out awards and recognizes cities whose technology is cutting edge, cities that have very secure systems, cities that use technology to be transparent, uh, cities that incorporate different types of applications and, and technological on-ramps to their system to allow folk to access information and, and interface with their city. Well, guess what? Uh, they have categories for sizes of cities, and in the 250,000 to 499,999 population category, one person can make a difference, <laughs> Durham was awarded second place the Digital City Survey Award for governments that use technology um, to improve transparency. So this is a, I visited with the folk in technology uh, services last week. I told them that I collected an award and I would be presenting it tonight to Mr. Mayor and Mr. Manager. Congratulations uh, to our folk here at the city. And I want to turn this over to the manager. I thought about hanging in my office, but I'm going to, I'm going to relinquish it <laughs> to the manager. Congratulations, Durham. It's going again. Thank you very much, Council Member. That's a great, another great award for the City of Durham and well-deserved. Uh, other announcements? Council Member Reese. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I didn't have a chance earlier to tell you everything I wanted to tell you about Boy Scout Troop 424, and uh -huh. so I'll take a moment to do that now. Yeah. I want to thank these young people for being here tonight. They were not here just to help us with the pledge, although they did that spectacularly. Thank you. Um, they are here uh, meeting... Uh, one of the requirements for the Citizenship in the Community Merit Badge. Mr. Mayor, as you well know, this Merit Badge is one of the many Merit Badges required uh, for reaching Eagle Scout rank. 
Uh, and the purpose of the Citizenship and Community Merit Badge is to encourage good citizenship through teaching scouts how local government works and how to participate in government so that they can make a positive impact on their community. So I just wanted to thank those young people for being here and especially thank Durham's own Senior Assistant City Attorney Fred Lamar, who is a member of the Adult Committee uh, for Troop 424 and is actually the designated counselor for the Citizenship in the Community Merit Badge. So thanks all of them for being here and thank you, uh, Senior Assistant City Attorney Fred Lamar. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. All right. Any other announcements by Mount Council Member Caballero? And I just want to give a shout out to my hermana who's sitting in the crowd all the way from Tucson, Arizona, and my brother, uh, someone said that, and Cami Juarez. Great. Great to have you all. You can always move to Durham. <laughs> I also have an announcement. Any other announcements? I have one more. Um, Council members and, uh, and uh, members of the public here tonight, uh, as many of you know, uh, every year I challenge the uh, employees of the city of Durham to a five-mile run. Uh, this began when I first got on council, so I believe this is the seventh time uh, that we've had this event. Some years I'm injured and I can't run, but this year I wasn't, uh, and uh, it was a great event. We had... Oh, gosh, I think 75 people, perhaps, uh, members of our city staff and a few family members as well. Uh, and uh, it, was, it was a great event. I am, uh, yeah, and so there's some pictures of us. Um, we look amazing. Um, and uh, as, as I will read uh, some, of the, some of the information that you need to know, first of all, once again this year, Fastest runner in the city of Durham, Brian Poole. Oh, my gosh. It's not fair. Uh, last year, he won while pushing a baby carriage. Uh, this year, he did not push the baby carriage. He just uh, pretty much laughed everybody. Uh, his time was something around 30 minutes, I believe. I don't have the time right here, but he is a very fast runner. Uh, and uh, that was, it, it was great. Uh, we had two runners. Um, uh, that, that, that the second and third place winner, uh, so, so Brian's in transportation, uh, the second and third place winners uh, also are very fast, and both of them are from Public Works. Paul Wiebke uh, in second place and Sean Doig in third place. And let me just tell you, Paul Wiebke is, um, he's 55, and the guy can flat run. Uh, and uh, so it was, it was really fun uh, to be out with everybody. I'm going to read the names of everybody that participated. Uh, in addition to the ones I've read, Nathan Rittenhouse, Lloyd Schmeidler, Andrew Bullard, Corey Terry, Regina Youngblood, uh, who thank you to Regina's department for organizing everything, Timothy Howe, Fabian Wright, Aaron Ortiz, Obed Ortiz, Eric Halstead. Uh, Eric has run every year. I think he may be the only person that's run every year. He's often second place, always the bridesmaid, never the bride, as I say. Uh, Michael Schreiber, awesome. Diana Schreiber, uh, Will Glenn, J.J. Scott. J.J. was pushing a baby carriage this year, uh, and he beat me. Uh, <laughs> Jeffrey Johnson, Tom Dawson, Sean Huey, William Diaz. William, I think you should know, is, an, is a... Is a um, William is an employee uh, in our... Public Works Department. William is currently training to for the Olympic tryouts for uh, the nation of Puerto Rico on their Greco-Roman wrestling team. So this was a training run for William. And it's awesome to know that we have a City of Durham employee who's working towards the Olympic tryouts and we'll be doing that at the end of the year. Um, William Bo Ferguson. Oh my gosh. Fast as grease lightning. Uh, Sean McKnight, Sean Tuttle, uh, and Dana Horncole had already run seven miles in the morning before they came back and ran our five miles. Becky Martin, James Minor, Renee Buchanan, Brandy Minor, Emma Gomez, Bertha Johnson, Alethea Hardy, Sharon Williams, Joyce Baker, David Boyd. Awesome, David. Sydney Anderson, Darren Johnson, Shanika Bauman, Kristen Randall, Patrick Walton, Dan Love, Gracie Ferguson, Josh Edwards, Noah Edwards, Melinda Squires Nelson, my arch rival. I did beat her this year. Sorry, Melinda. 
Marcus Belvin, Jasper Petty, Jennifer Buzzin, Tevin West, James Liani, Norma Washington, also known as Streak, <laughs> Yolanda Dye Robinson, Cheryl McDonald, Delano Simmons, Jay Reinstein, our former uh, city employee, was visiting, visiting us from Fayetteville and, and uh, walked <laughs> with us. Abril Najera, da Davin Washington, Keith Short, Carl Brody, Joe Clark, John Ferguson, Hanalia Hoberman, Jermaine Brewington, Keisha Barnett, Keith Herman, Gwendolyn Burnett, Veronica Jackson, Yolanda Seaborn. I really want to thank Gwendolyn, Veronica, and Yolanda for coordinating the event. Andre White, Helene Toomey, Leslie Kirkman, Kirk St. Aramand, Maureen Devlin, and Sandra Snipes. I want to thank everybody for being out. Uh, for those who beat me, you will not beat me next year. Mm. <laughs> for those I beat, too bad. <laughs> uh, but it was a wonderful night, a wonderful day, rather, and uh, really appreciate the opportunity to be out with everyone. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, you didn't tell us your time. No? My time. Actually, I have my time somewhere on here. Let's see. My time was 40 Five minutes and two seconds. Okay. It's not bad for an old guy, wouldn't you say? Okay. Mr. Mayor, if I hadn't been at another event, I definitely, absolutely would not have been able to run five miles. So <laughs> good job. Well, I, I think that I won my age group since I was the only person in my age group. <laughs> uh, okay. And with that, we'll move uh, to priority <coughs> items by the city manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Good evening, everyone. I do want to thank Councilmember Middleton for picking up that award on our behalf. We appreciate that. And Mr. Mayor, thank you for uh, your great uh, enjoyment, enjoyable leadership with our employees. They said something they really look forward to every year to uh, to get out and uh, be part of the uh, the run with the mayor, as we call it now. So we appreciate that very much. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have any priority items this evening. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Mr. Attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No priority items. Thank you, Mr. M Mr. Attorney. Uh, Madam Clerk. I have no items. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, we'll now move to the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda can be removed by any council member or member of the public. Uh, if, they, if the items are removed, they're uh, held to the end of the meeting. Uh, the consent agenda will, can be approved by a single vote of the council. Uh, so uh, I will read the items on the consent agenda. Let me just make sure I've got some items here that people want to speak on. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so the first item is uh, approval of city council minutes. Item two, 2019 city council meeting schedule. Item three, grant project ordinance, GPO amendments for community development block grant, CDBG, home consortium program grant, home emergency solutions grants, ESG, and housing opportunities for persons with HIV, AIDS, HOPWA for 2018-19. Item four, dedicated housing fund, FY18 revised spending plan. Item five, wastewater pretreatment program, interlocal agreement between Durham County and the city of Durham. <laughs> Item six, professional services contract with the Timmons Group, Inc. for the design of the Hoover Road Athletic Park project. Item seven, design contract with Surface 678 PA design for the CM Herndon Park improvements project. Item eight, proposed lease for Durham district number three substation at 10 consultant place. And I'm gonna pull this item. Uh, there are a couple of members of the public who would like to speak on this item. That was item eight. Uh, and then uh, item 12, proposed acquisition of 2,790.86 square feet of fee simple, 10,209.40 square feet of temporary construction easement from Rugby Road LLC at 4510 Fayetteville Road, Durham, North Carolina 27713, parcel number 146806 for the Fayetteville Road Improvement Project. Item 13, United States Environmental Protection Agency 2018 Brownsfield Assessment Grant Project Ordinance. Item 14, contract with Mid-Atlantic Associates for implementation of the 2018 United States Environmental Protection Agency Brownfields Assessment Grant. Item 16, this item can be found on the general business agenda, and item 17 to 19 can be found on the general business agenda public hearings. Council members, you've heard the consent agenda, and I will ask for a motion that we approve the agenda uh, with all of the items except for item 8. So to approve. Second. It's been moved and approved and, and seconded that we approve the consent agenda. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. Motion passes 7 0. 
Thank you very much. We will now move to uh, our general business agenda, and we will begin with item 16, the 2018 third quarter crime report presentation. And um, I'll ask um, Chief Davis uh, to join us. Chief, good to see you. Thank you. We do have some speakers who are signed up, so I think what I will do is I will um, ask you to give your report, and then once you've given your report, we'll uh, we'll ha hear from the speakers, and then we'll have questions from council. Absolutely. Is that okay? Great. Yes. Welcome, Chief. We're glad to have you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Tonight, I will present the Durham Police Department's third quarter crime report. The report covers the Durham Police Department's six performance measures, part one violent crime, part one property crime, part one index crime, clearance rates, response times to priority one calls, and staffing levels. So I'll also cover a few of the 2018 third quarter highlights. As for part one index crime, reported part one index crime, which is a total of part one violent and property crime decreased by 7% during the first nine months of 2018, compared to the same period in 2017. Reported crime was down in five out of seven categories, as well as in overall part one violent crime, property and index crime. Property crime made up 84% of all part one crime. Larcenies comprised more than half, which was 57% of all part one crime. Part one violent crime categories include homicides, rapes, robberies, and aggravated assaults. Part one violent crime was down by 17% during the first nine months of 2018 compared to the same period in 2017. This percentage reduction was due to double digit decreases in robberies and aggravated assaults. Robberies and aggravated assaults were at three year lows for the first nine months of the year. This chart illustrates a weekly comparison of reported violent crime during the first three quarters of 2018 compared to the same weeks in 2017. As you can see, we started off the year really good. During the summer months, we showed upticks in various violent crimes. The chart further illustrates that during the months of June uh, through August and some parts of September, we had experienced upticks in crime. The chart shows that violent crime during the first quarter of 2018 was down significantly compared to the first quarter of 2017. There were 26 homicides during the first nine months of 2018 compared to 16 in the same period of 2017. The table indicates 24 homicides because one case has been cleared and reclassified as self-defense. And in another case, an arrest was made in a 2017 cold case. This is the method in which the UCR uh, crime reporting is compiled. 10 of the 26 cases remain open at this time. Year to date, as of today, there are 13 open cases. The number of reported sexual assaults decreased by 3%. There were several cases from previous years that were reported during the first nine months of 2018. The oldest case of sexual assault reported this year is from 1977. Robberies decreased significantly during the third quarter of 2018 to the lowest third quarter numbers in three years. Investigators arrested several people who were each charged with committing multiple robberies. The number of aggravated assault victims decreased by 16%, and the number of actual incidents decreased by 11% during the first nine months of 2018. 
These numbers indicate that we have responded to fewer multi-victim incidents this year. The number of shooting incidents dropped by 18%, and the number of shooting victims decreased by 21% during the first nine months of 2018. The total number of victims in multi-victim firearm incidents decreased by a total of 26%. Part 1 property crime. Overall, Part 1 property crime was down by 5% during the first nine months of 2018 compared to the same period in 2017. Burglaries were at a 10-year low for the first nine months of the year. This chart illustrates a weekly comparison of property crime during 2018 compared to the same weeks in 2017. So as you can see, similar to the weekly violent crime report, increases in property crime for the first nine months were in the summer months. <clears throat> Part one, property crime. So larcenies comprise more than half, 57% of all part one crime. 44% of all reported larcenies were from motor vehicles or involved auto parts and accessories. More than a quarter of all larcenies involved shoplifting. Again, we experienced an increase in the number of larcenies from motor vehicles, particularly from unlocked vehicles with items in plain sight. And again, we have informed the community of these crimes of opportunity and continue to offer crime prevention tips through press releases, social media posts, and TV interviews as well. We also launched the Park Smart Initiative to combat vehicle break-ins and vehicle thefts. I'll discuss um, the Park Smart Initiative a little bit further in my presentation. Again, the favorite vehicle for auto thefts during the first nine months was none other than the Honda Accord which has been the most stolen vehicle for the past several years. Due to the con continuous, this continuous problem of people leaving their keys in their vehicle or leaving the vehicle running, we have seen an increase in vehicle thefts. More than 40% of the vehicles stolen this year had keys left in the vehicle or had the engine running. We want to continue to remind our citizens, especially during the upcoming winter months, that this is not a good idea. <laughs> and that every time you think about getting into a warm car, just keep in mind that the car may not be there when you go outside. So clearance rates. We compare our department's clearance rates to other departments our size. As a reminder, last year due to the population growth, we're now aligned with other cities with populations from 250,000 to 500,000 as illustrated in this chart. 2017 FBI statistics are the most recent ones that are available at this time. Our clearance rates were better than the average for cities, for cities our size in all categories during the first nine months of 2018. I want to commend the investigators that work in our various violent crime units for the work that they've done to achieve such high clearance rates, particularly in homicides and even in robberies. It's very difficult to solve these crimes most of the time, but they do. They have done exceptional work. Priority one calls for service. There were 6,723 priority one calls for service in the first nine months of 2018, which was, was a 4% decrease from the same period in 2017. Our average response time was 6.03 minutes, which did not meet the target of the 5.8. This calculates to be about 13 seconds off of our target, and that's where it typically fluctuates anywhere from 11 to 13 seconds. It's been pretty consistent that way over the last couple of years. 
we answer 52.3% of the priority one calls in less than five minutes <coughs> in the first nine months of 2018. Staffing. At the end of the third quarter, our sworn staffing was at 97%. This was at the end of September. It is currently at 98%. Our non-sworn staffing was at 88% at the end of September 2018. It is currently at 91%. 19 recruits from Basic Law Enforcement Training Academy number 47 graduated on August 9th. There were currently, there are currently 25 recruits in BLET number 48, which started on August 13. This academy is scheduled to graduate in February 2019. Four officers completed the Advanced Law Enforcement Training, which is um, acronym ALET, program during the third quarter. This is an accelerated program for officers who are already state certified and come to us from other agencies. Applications coming into the department are currently up by 16.5% compared to the same period in 2017. U visa requests by the quarter. In an effort to assist in the investigation and successful prosecution of certain crimes, the Durham Police Department reviews applications for U non-immigrant status. This program, known as U visas, is an immigration benefit for victims of certain crimes who are currently or have previously assisted law enforcement or who are likely to be helpful in the investigation and prosecution of criminal activity. On January 15, 2018, the Durham Police Department updated its U visa policy for certifications. Historically, most cases were denied due to the lack of workable leads. The new policy allows for qualifying cases less than four years old to be certified even if the case is inactive. Under the new policy, more requests for U visa certifications are being received and more are being approved. As mentioned during my last presentation, the department would seek to expand the four-year period once the caseload that we were currently working was reduced. As you can see in this chart, the department has worked diligently to clear pending applications within the four-year window and will again expand to accommodate older requests in the very near future. The Durham Police Department is taking a proactive role in helping crime victims take advantage of this program when eligible through the utilization of Spanish language radio, which we interview on a regular basis, and social media platforms to communicate policy modifications. For the first three quarters of 2018, approximately two-thirds of applications have been approved compared to 21% approval in 2017. National Night Out was August 7th. We had a great National Night Out opportunity to get out and uh, spend time with the community and show them our appreciation for their support in our work every day. Hundreds of community members along with city officials participated in National Night Out. This was just an image from a couple of the sites that we visited. The Park Smart Initiative. The Park Smart Initiative focuses on preventing vehicle break-ins and vehicle thefts, which increased significantly during the summer. The program was spearheaded by our Community Resource Unit and was launched in July 2018. We have 150 high-quality metal signs, which are placed in areas where we've seen an increase in reports of vehicle break-ins. We provided 30 of these signs to parks and recreation to display at parks throughout the city. Vehicle break-ins and vehicle thefts are often crimes of opportunity. We believe that the Park Smart Initiative is an effective way to remind people to keep their valuables out of sight, take their keys with them, and lock their doors. Just to give you a little bit of um, overview on outstanding community commitment from a few of our employees. 
Some of our employees carried out acts of kindness and compassion uh, in, a very, in various ways. In September, officers from Squad 2C responded to a disturbance call and ended up contributing their own money to purchase a motel room for several nights for an ill woman until they could find resources to get her long-term help. One day, our records unit civilian employee, Brent Shreve, was leaving headquarters for his lunch break when he was approached by a man who asked for help to feed his family, which included two young children. Brent came back inside and told his coworker, Dwight Bell, about the situation. Brent and Dwight went to McDonald's and used their money to purchase two meals for the kids and two meals for the father and other family members. <coughs> As most of you know, 18 Durham police officers volunteered to go to Wilmington to help out for a week in the aftermath of Hurricane Florence. They helped with traffic, site security, and responding to calls. They lived in very uncomfortable conditions during their time there, but they found great personal reward in the opportunity to help the citizens and first responders of Wilmington get back on their feet. Four DPD officers from the Durham County Fraternal Order of Police Lodge also went to assist the New Hanover County Sheriff's Office. And of course, we held the community grand opening for our new police and 911 facility headquarters located at 602 East Main Street on October 20th, and hundreds of people attended. We conducted numerous tours that day and continued well beyond the four o'clock end time. The building is now open for public business, reports, desk officers there, and it is fully operational. The final units that will be assigned to this location will move in mid-December. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much for a great report. Uh, we're now going to hear from members of the public, and then uh, we'll get you back up for, uh, for questions and comments from the council. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to call out the names of members of the public, and if you, uh, as I call your name, if you would come over here to the right of the podium, uh, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll ask each person uh, to hold their comments to two minutes, okay? Uh, Monica Rosa. Brianna Rosa, Margarita Serrano Ocampo, Bryant Casarubia Serrano, Lara, I'm sorry, I can't read your name. I'm uh, sorry, La, can't read the handwriting, but Leodes, maybe? Alejandra Valladares, Silvia Segundo Felipe, Sandiso is the only name listed on that one. And so if you all could all come over in this part of the room, that would be great. <coughs> Please go ahead. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Mónica Rosa. Soy víctima, uh, vivo en la ciudad de Durham, 17 años. Uh, soy mamá. Uh, soy víctima, de, fui víctima de, de crimen tres veces y estamos aquí presente hoy día para pedir a la jefa policía que por favor cambie las pólizas uh, de la, por la, la visa U, um, que el Estatuto Federal dice que, son, que no tiene que haber límites para la visa U. Um, aquí estamos todos hoy día presentes para pedirle por favor que nos ayude, que nos dé su voto de confianza. Eh, somos madres, somos esposas, somos hijos. Y nada más. Brianna? Hello, my name is Brianna. I'm Monica Rosa's daughter. My mother was a victim of a crime. Our president just doesn't care that he is taking families away and separating them. I want that to change. I want other immigrants and my mother and family to stay together. Our president is very cruel, and I want everyone to work together and change the law rules. Thank you and good night.
Hi. Hi, good night. My name is Brian. I am the son of Margarita Serrano Campo. My mom is a victim of a crime. It is unfair that my mom has to worry every single day about the crime. What I want from the chief police is to get rid of the restrictions on the visa U. I don't want any families to be separated and to be sad because of that. Thank you. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Laura Loaesa. Yo he sido víctima tres veces a mano armada. Uh, estoy aquí esta noche para pedirle a la jefa de policía que por favor quite los cuatro años de restricción y que no haya límite para que todas las personas que han sido víctimas más de cuatro años puedan beneficiarse sobre este programa. Gracias. Hola, buenas noches a todos. Les... Mi nombre es Margarita Serrano Campo y yo vine a pedirle a la jefa de policía que quite las restricciones de los cuatro años de la visa U y les vine a pedir a todos ustedes que si nos pueden apoyar en eso. Yo fui víctima hace, en el 2009, septiembre 7, es una fecha que no se puede olvidar porque yo tenía una bebé recién nacida cuando se metieron dos personas a saltarme a mi casa, nos tuvieron secuestradas como dos horas y media Tenía, tengo tres niños y un hermano que lo golpearon y quiero ver si nos puede apoyar la jefa de policía. Por favor, gracias. Hola, buenas noches. Mi nombre es Silvia Segundo Felipe. Estoy igual aquí apoyando al grupo. Yo también fui víctima. Este, fui víctima cinco veces y hoy estamos aquí como grupo a pedirle a la jefa de policía que si puede quitar las restricciones de la visa U porque yo creo que ya es tiempo de recibir un apoyo. Tenemos dignidad y pedimos pues apoyo a todos ustedes y queremos parar la separación de familias unidas, porque yo creo que ya basta, o como cada uno de ustedes presentes aquí esta noche, yo creo que ustedes como padres no les gustaría que el día de mañana sus hijos se les quitara o que fueran separados. Yo soy madre soltera, tengo 15 años aquí en este país tengo un hijo que va a la escuela pública de Durham y a mí no me gustaría que el día de mañana me separaran de mi hijo. Por eso vengo hoy a pedirle a la jueza de policía que quite las restricciones de la visa U y que nos apoyen. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask, uh, I see it. Oh, I'm sorry. One more person. There's one more. Yeah. Just want to thank you for... Um, all the great job you guys are doing. I think there's a lot of humanity in this council. And I think this is the plea of um, the victims here and the plea to the, you know, our chief. We're seeing great, great data. It's showing you know, improvement. And I think it's about, um, it's about seeing the humanity in, in, in these cases when, you, when it concerns victims. Um, there isn't any status, color, or, or, or um, origin, national origin or anything. Victims are victims. Um, we just heard from our presentation that there's a victim who, uh, of sexual assault, aggravated assault from 1977, and who just reported it now. I mean, the fact that it takes so long to process crime. When you're a victim of crime, Me Too movement tells us that. We just saw on national television, you know, something from decades ago. And the claim is, <coughs> why didn't she report it then? So when it, when it comes to statutes of limitations, when it comes to putting a cap on things, people take time to process. And I know that you understand that, that the department is handling as much as, um, you know, the manpower, there's a lot of considerations there. But we definitely want you to, to understand, like, there are a lot of people out here who have been victims not just once, some, you know, we heard three times, and other people are not gonna come forward, and it's, it's gonna be really hard for people to collaborate and cooperate um, with, with our law enforcement officers if they feel like, you know, there's, there, there's not a benefit in collaboration, there's not a benefit in, in, in giving like useful information that can definitely you know be be uh, leading um, to solve these issues and I know I know that there are a lot of issues a lot of considerations but putting a cap is telling some victims their situation their experience doesn't matter <coughs> so I hope you consider lifting the cap um, and maybe maybe there's ways to continue this conversation about what that would look like but um, I know that federally when I look uh, at the policy, there doesn't seem to be a cap as part of the eligibility criteria. Um, so thank you very much for the time. Thank you very much.
Could you state your name? Uh, my name is Sandro, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm here on behalf of the family who, who didn't go through something like four years ago, who gone through um, some tough years in the 2000s, which is way more than four years. Uh, I think you should lift the, the um, their year limit. If not, I'm very proud of the family who came to speak here. Um, if you lift that, this place will be packed. There's families out there who who are scared to talk, but yet if they talk, um, nothing's gonna happen. Um, you guys want to want to um, the police department wants to lie from us. They want us to report crime if something happens, but when we do, we don't get the same response. So I really hope you guys help us, and I hope city council does help us also. Just like earlier, is like not, gotta be talked to. I forgot what the quote was, but you can't just say you can't just speak positive about this. So you actually got to do something for us. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, uh, Chief Davis, why don't you come back up, and uh, we'll have some uh, comments from council members. Councilmember Caballero. I just wanted to acknowledge the children who came up here and spoke on behalf of their parents. That was very brave of you. Thank you. Um, I les quiero decir que debemos, ustedes deben mejor, y lo estamos dando ahora, especialmente con el lenguaje que les ofrecemos. Thank you very much. Council members, questions, comments? Well, also, um, I'll just echo my colleague and <clears throat> thank everyone for their comments and particularly the children. Uh, I think uh, anytime a child steps up to, um, you know, make a statement about what they believe in, um, I think it's really empowering. So thank you all. And, you know, I, I know that we've had this conversation here before about, you know, our U visa policy and uh, you mentioned it briefly in your presentation. I think it'd be great if we kind of come back to that now um, and discuss what changes you considered first of all I want to thank those individuals that came tonight to speak I've met with some of you personally not just once but on a couple of occasions there have been numerous uh, discussions in reference to you visa and I don't think you could find a more sensitive leader about this issue than myself the change in the policy began with me. So I'm very sensitive to the issue. And uh, we discussed how we could continue to allow individuals to be a part of this program gradually. And this year we've made significant progress. And in my report, I think my report really just echoes what I said in my previous presentation that I was committed to making those changes as we were able to do so. Um, what I didn't want to happen is that we open a floodgate of applications that people would expect that they would get a response within a week or two because it does take a significant amount of time, you know, at times on some of these cases. And um, Captain Bond, who who was here earlier, she does, yeah, she's still here. And um, she does a good job at, at getting, getting these cases done. I've even given her some assistance uh, recently to help get more done. So in my presentation, I talked about expanding. And that is so that we can look at the other cases that of individuals who have been denied in the past. We have some applications that we have in our coffers that we will begin to look at as we expand the program and also look at any cases that are still coming in. Hopefully we won't have as many cases, you know, in the future as it relates to um, crimes against our Hispanic community members. But um, I'm certainly receptive to expanding the program and I think I was very clear about, about that. Um, to, to say that to take restrictions off I don't look at it as taking the restrictions off or there being any restrictions. It's just that my commitment was, and it has been, to change the policy as we get to a point where we can take in more applications. And um, as you can see, this year, we had an uptick at the beginning of the year. 
it consistently declined, and we're at a point now where we're, where we're ready to look at additional applications. Thank you. And we can continue that process. It doesn't, it, it doesn't do anything to this program or there isn't any personal reason why we wouldn't continue to take in applications. We just don't want to take in a thousand and realize that we don't have the manpower right now to go through that many applications, but we're doing really well as far as the expansion that we um, did this past year and to even look at two or three years beyond that. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, lo siento que mi español no es uh, muy bueno, pero um, quiero dar las gracias a todos ustedes para venir aquí y um, compartir las historias con ustedes um, y especialmente a uh, los niños. Muchas gracias para... Um, para hablar con, con nosotros. Other comments? Um, I'll just add to that. Uh, gracias a todos los que salieron a hablar esta noche. Uh, le damos la bienvenida al ayuntamiento y nos tomamos muy un, en serio sus palabras. And I especially want to say to Bryant and Brianna, Thank you so much for being here and for representing your families and your community, and you spoke very well. So it's great to have you here. Uh, just separately, um, I brought this up at our last council meeting, um, but I do want to just say to you uh, how grateful I am to the department for initiating the Safe Places program and initiative. Um, I think it's a huge step to you know bring the community in to help us prevent you know violence and. Uh, harassment against LGBT community. So I just want to, you know, acknowledge you here. Absolutely. <coughs> so thank you. It was a good day. Thank you. Uh, I want to uh, appreciate, Chief, the work that you all have done uh, and Captain Bond, uh, that the tremendous expansion that we have seen in the U visa program uh, and that the fact that that's making a positive difference in the lives of many members of our community. And it has been a, a real turnaround uh, from where we were a year ago. And I, I think that our new policy has been very, very productive and constructive, so thank you. And I also want to appreciate your interest in expanding it. I think that you know that all of us on council are interested in that, and I know that you are as well. And uh, appreciate the, uh, the way in which you're going about it and just want to thank you for that. Thank you. Councilman Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Hi, uh, Chief Davis. Um, I want to echo what my colleagues have said about how, uh, how much we appreciate the policy change that you made when you came on board uh, to um, putting time, energy, and resources into processing these U-Visa applications. As the mayor said, it's made a huge difference, um, and the data really show uh, how many more of these are being processed uh, by your department. I also take heart from your statement in the presentation that uh, you're going to be looking to uh, accept more applications in the very near future, I wrote down. Um, and as I said uh, last quarter when we talked about this, I hope you will be mindful um, of the resources that you need to do that uh, and will uh, talk to us about any additional needs you see in that area because I can tell you that that's something that uh, those of us sitting up here are very interested to help out with if you think that would be helpful. Thank you. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention while I had the opportunity, um, you normally I like to talk to identify a couple of the great stories of your officers from uh, your more detailed report. Unfortunately, you pulled into your presentation the story I was going to tell, um, which is great. I'm glad to see those officers getting the, the um, credit they deserve, um, and you certainly don't need to hear me talk about it. But I, what I did want to talk about also was to take a longer view at the crime rate in the city of Durham. Uh, it's something that I don't think gets uh, enough people understand really where we are compared to where we've been. Uh, your department keeps great statistics, publishes every week a year-to-date um, uh, data sheet, an uh, Excel spreadsheet about crime in the city of Durham, uh, comparing current uh, the current nine months of the year to 
uh, the five-year average of the years, five years immediately preceding this year. Um, when you look at that uh, spreadsheet, what you'll see is that during that period of time, um, well, first of all, the city of Durham has expanded in population over that period of time about 12%. Current population of Durham is around 267,000 people or thereabouts. Over that same period of time, violent crime, the number of violent crimes has gone down 21%. The overall uh, rate of crime in part one crime, both violent crime and property crime, has gone down 21% uh, while our population has increased. And that is a testament uh, to our entire department and uh, the, the approach that the city overall has taken in trying to make this city a better place to live. We still have a lot of work to do. I hope we can see an expansion of the UVs program shortly, uh, but I just want to say how grateful I am both to you and the folks that have been working in the department uh, for some time to make that kind of difference in the life of our city. Um, it's something we don't talk about enough, and I just want to say thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Middleton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Chief, and to the command staff. Always good uh, to see you all in the chamber. Um, I, I think your work on the U visa has been perhaps one of the greatest steps to align this city's values with our actions. Um, and I want to congratulate you. And uh, we've still got work to do, we know. Uh, but I, I, I want to commend you and the staff and, and to our, our neighbors, our residents, our citizens, our friends that have come out uh, tonight uh, who have given voice, who have made this story real uh, for us and not just numbers uh, on a paper. So I want to I just commend you, Chief, and, and commend uh, the bravery of our citizens as well. I didn't want to ask a specific question about the, the current class going through, uh, I guess it's BLET. Do you have any demographical information on the breakdown for that class? This current one? Don't have it with us tonight. Okay. But we can certainly get it to you. Cool. And um, th this is a, an encouraging report, and we've been getting a number of encouraging reports from you. I just want to ask if you want to take the opportunity to assure us uh, that your methodology in compiling statistics is above board and sound and that these numbers are real and uh, that and assure the people and the citizens and the residents of Durham that crime really is going down in our city and that you're not cooking the books. <laughs> you just want to take the opportunity? I would love to take that opportunity. Please do. Uh, we do nothing... It, it does nothing for us or this city to cook the books. You know, we are residents here just like other folks. And what you see is the work that these men and some women do every day. And sometimes they get a little frustrated with me because I want them to be in areas that, you know, they feel like they're already, we're already there, we're already, but we're trying to take the department from good to great. We just are. The numbers that you see are accurate numbers. These officers feel really good about the work that they've done this year. We're not where we'd like to be with homicides, but as we all know, you know, there are a lot of elements that go along with dealing with homicides. A lot of it has to do with our gang-involved activity and so on. But as it relates to robberies, uh, aggravated assaults, you can't cook the books when somebody gets shot. So um, thank you for giving me that opportunity to assure um, our residents that these numbers are correct. We have one of the best crime analysts um, knock on wood that he will stay with us. We have one of the best crime analysts and um, his team that does this work every day. So thank you. Thank you, Chief. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Chief, I'll just add to uh, what's already been said uh, in terms of the report. Violent crime down by 17% in the first nine months of the year over last year is a big number. I doubt if there are any communities in America or very few of our size cities that are having that kind of success. And uh, I think that we have to be careful with that because we know it's hard to maintain it. Yeah, it is. But uh, let's enjoy the fact that we are experiencing this success and let's congratulate our, uh, our command staff, some of our members are here, and the entire force for the work that you're doing. Um, and um, I also agree about our crime analyst and appreciate uh, your comments on that. 
I think that our crime analysis is absolutely great, and the, the level of detail at which this is available to us is amazing. So uh, I think that's just also been a real strength. Uh, congratulations on the clearance rates. Uh, as you mentioned, they're above, uh, up, uh, above the national average, and that's great. Uh, the, the fact that we are at now 98% fully staffed for sworn officers is a big change. And I think that some of the actions that we've taken in terms of increasing pay, providing benefits, and also the work that you all have done in the department to make the department an attractive place to work uh, is bearing fruit. Um, I like the, the, the results from the misdemeanor diversion court continue to show excellent results in terms of people who are not reoffending uh, in, in both of the age groups, for the under 18 age group and also for the 18 to 21. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's great that we continue to do that work. I did want to ask you about the Park Smart, and my question is: Are we? Uh, are you, is your staff working with uh, Beverly's staff in terms of pub the city publicizing this Park? You know, the whole park publicizing the idea is we go to the winter, don't leave your keys in your car, and you know, making more of a campaign around that. Um, are there? Are you all working collaborating with the, mm -hmm, with the uh, city? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, we are. Right. Uh, Will does it excellent job working with Beverly because we know that the reach is just that much greater yeah. when we work through the city as well. Fantastic. And Parks and Recreation is working with us as well. Fantastic. I know that um, also that we have had a, a couple of TV stations have approached me just to ask, uh, are there anything that we would like to provide community service announcements for? And this might be an opportunity for that. So um, I could I could uh, speak to staff after, the, after that, uh, after the meeting about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments, uh, council members? Any questions or comments? I would just, Councilmember Freeman. I would also like to congratulate um, on presenting a, a fine nine months of the year. I I'm, I really want to thank the children for being here as well. I'm not going to try to speak Spanish today, <laughs> but um, it's important to recognize that this organizing that's happening is in, is is very important to our community as a whole, and I really appreciate you all being here. Um, and it's important to keep the conversation going, and so I just want to make sure we end on that note and making sure that we know that this conversation will continue. And it's really important to recognize that this is not an issue around whether or not we will, it's a matter of how we do. And so it's, it's, just, it's just a matter of making sure that folks here understand that their work is not going unnoticed, and also uh, as well as the police force. you know the, the work of Captain Bond and the work of each and every captain here and every officer here serving for the city. I really um, enjoyed the opportunity to get to tour the facility and see just how much has been, has been put into the technology and the thought process behind how departments are organized and who's doing what in what area. There's, there's, there's a lot of cogs in this wheel and it's important to recognize that we're all a part of it and continue to work together. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. I did have um, one comment. I We don't usually bring this up during the report, but the clearance rates um, for all of the crimes that you have listed are significantly above um, the FBI rates, and especially so for uh, the violent crimes that we're, most, um, that we're most interested in focusing on. So I just wanted to point out that um, it's clear that your officers are doing an incredible amount of work to actually solve um, to solve these crimes and um, are meeting are ex meeting and exceeding um, these standards by quite a bit. Thank you, Councilmember Johnson. Um, they are exceptional, uh, and I'm not just saying that uh, across country. When you think in terms of investigations, when they clear some of these cases, is amazing. So. Uh, I owe a lot to the team here and to the leadership for the work that they're doing to keep keep our folks on it and keep keep them focused and keep them motivated. So thank you for that. Thank you. Mr. Mayor Freeman. In addition, uh, Mayor Pro Tem brought to mind another issue in recognizing that there may be some miscommunication in the community around who does the investigation on certain cases. And I want to make sure that everyone's aware that it's actually at the state level that a certain case is being being proceeded on, and I would love for us to have conversation about how folks can be engaged in support and trying to push so that the state level of investigations clearance rates actually move up as well. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. 
Any other comments? Council Member Caballero. Yeah, um, so ditto what mm -hmm. most of my colleagues have said. This is excellent. My whole time on, on council has been just stellar as far as crime. Like, I don't actually have. I'm like, yay, this is great. Um, <laughs> So thank you, I have uh, a high amount of confidence in you as a chief and in your department, and you know how I feel about U visas, I've said that many times. Um, so I will not belabor that point. I do wanna end on the folks who came tonight to speak to us, we need you here. Please come back. Um, please share what you need from your council members. This is your space. Les quiero decir a los que vinieron acá a hablar con nosotros que por favor vengan de nuevo. Esto es su lugar. Es importante compartir lo que quieren decir a nosotros. Es nuestro trabajo. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Chief. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. All right. Uh, thank you so much. And now we'll move to uh, item 18. I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Andrews. <laughs> item 17, zoning map change for Barbie Road 54 townhouses. Um, this is a public hearing item, and I will ask our uh, staff for their presentation. Ms. Sunyak, welcome. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Jamie Sunyak with the Planning Department. Requests for a zoning map change has been received from Eden's land for a 14.38 acre track. The subject site is located at 1007 East NC54 and uh, 6452 Barbie Road. The site is presently zoned general commercial with a development plan to allow up to 160,000 square feet building area for, or for all uses allowed under the commercial general zoning district except cemeteries, passenger terminals, self-storage, and wireless facilities. Mr. Edens plans to change this designation to uh, commercial general with a development plan to allow for a maximum of 112 townhouse units. The parcel is currently designated commercial on the future land use map, which would be consistent with the zoning change. The Durham Planning Commission at their September 11th, 2018 meeting recommended approval of the proposed commercial general zoning district by a vote of 10 to two. Staff determines that this that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances. Two motions are required for this application. The first is to do op adopt a consistency statement, and the second is to adopt a um, <coughs> zoning ordinance. Thank you very much, Ms. Sonek. Did you mention that uh, this has been advertised uh, as, uh, okay. I, I didn't, uh, I, we will. Oh, okay. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, Pat Young with the Planning Department, I can certify for the record that this public hearing item has been properly noticed as required by law. And there's an affidavit to that effect on file with the Planning Department. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Sunyak. You always do a great job in presenting. Uh, you've heard from staff, um, and now I'm going to uh, declare this public hearing open. And first, I'm going to ask, are there any questions by members of the Council uh, for our staff? Any questions for staff? Hearing none, uh, we do have one person who has signed up to speak uh, on this, and, and that is Mr. Jared Edens. Uh, Mr. Edens, why don't you come to the podium, but before you do, let me ask now, is there anyone else that would like to speak on this item? Is there anyone here who would like to speak on this public hearing item? Anyone? Okay. Uh, Mr. Edens, uh, I'll, I'll give you three minutes, and then if you need more, we can uh, figure that out. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Jared Edens with Edens Land. I appreciate your time this evening. I'll try to keep things brief. Um, as Jamie mentioned, as, and I know some of you remember, we were here a little over a year ago uh, requesting a retail project. And it turns out the retail market never developed as we anticipated, uh, but the townhome market very much developed and is existing along that corridor now. You've got a lot of demand for townhomes in that area. So we're back before you tonight to try to change that zoning uh, to go back to residential. Uh, we did have a neighborhood meeting. Uh, we have no opposition I'm aware of. Um, and well, I would like to mention two additional proffers that we make this evening. Um, one would be a, a payment of $5,500 to Durham Public Schools. And that would, a second proffer would be a payment of $20,000 to the Affordable Housing Fund. So 
both of which would be due prior to the first final plat for the project, I believe. Could you repeat that last number for me? So a payment of $5,500 to Durham Public Schools um, and then a payment of $20,000 to the Affordable Housing Fund. And did you want to know when that was, um, when did you want to know when that was being paid? Is that also part of what your question um, was? Yes, sure. Could you also repeat that, Jerry? And, and it would be due at the first final plat for the project. Got it. Thank you. Appreciate Thank that, you. Mr. Mayor. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you have heard uh, Mr. Edens. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to speak on this item? Anyone else? If not, I'll uh, ask now council members any, uh, any questions or comments for Mr. Edens? Mr. Mayor. Uh, council Member Middleton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for the proffers to the uh, DPS and to our housing fund. Uh, what are the price points of the town? It's not set yet. Uh, the end user's not set 100% yet, but I anticipate they'll be very comparable to the Meadows North project that's directly across the street, across Barbie Road. So I'm, I'm going to anticipate 220, 230, that kind of price point. Thank you, sir. Thank you Thank very you, much. Sir. Any other comments or questions? Councilmember Caballero. Just looking at BPAC comments, and I was just wondering if there were any updates to any of the suggestions that they had made. Mr. Edens, do you want to, uh, the question was um, about the BPAC comments uh, from Councilmember Caballero. Um, I believe these were the same BPAC comments that yeah, they, these were, they were requested at, uh, last year as well as part of the retail zoning and our issues, some of them are, are requesting changes to property that's with, within a controlled access right away with DOT, Highway 40 and things like that, that are very difficult to work in and get permits for. So we didn't really think we could commit to something like that that I couldn't guarantee we could do. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Uh, thank you for the proffers um, on the Affordable Housing Fund and Durham Public Schools. Uh, any, other any other questions or comments, council members? Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this item? If not, I'm going to declare this public hearing closed and the matter is back before the council. And I will accept a motion on the consistency statement. Mr. Mayor, I just delivered. Absolutely. I'm sorry, council member Reese. Please do. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. You may not know this, but um, I was asked, let's say about three or four months ago, to identify for someone my biggest regret uh, on serving on this council. And I thought about it for a while, and it involves the, this case. Uh, but not in this iteration. It came back, it was before us about 14 months ago uh, for a commercial zoning. And my regret is not that I lost that vote six to one. Um, it was that I did not announce my vote before I voted. My colleagues on the council deserve to know how I intend to vote and why. And um, I felt really dumb that night because I don't think I did my job that night. And so I am doubly glad to see this matter back before us today so that I can tell you that I intend to support the zoning map change uh, and also that we can um, that I, I believe the developers found a use that's more in tune with the surrounding area. Uh, in, in light of the many other commercial nodes within a relatively short distance from this intersection. Um, so I just wanted to thank say you. that. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, and uh, and uh, thank my colleagues for your patience. Thank you very much. And Mr. Mayor, Councilman Freeman. in light of uh, Councilman Reese's comments, I think it's important to note that I was really on the no side of this until I heard some of the information tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, I will accept a motion on the consistency statement. So moved. And moved and second that we pass the consistency statement. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? <coughs> please close the vote. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you. I'll now accept a motion to adopt the ordinance. So moved. moved. Second. So moved and seconded that we adopt the ordinance. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. And now we'll move to item 18. Uh, and this is the FY 2019-2020 uh, annual action needs public hearing. 
This is a public hearing that we uh, have every year to receive comments on the actual annual action plan related to community development needs. And uh, I see that we have with us our community development director, Reginald Johnson. Welcome. Greetings, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, members of council, Reginald Johnson, director, Department of Community Development. Uh, this is our first of two annual uh, public hearings on our federal entitlement uh, programs. Uh, but the purpose is to, tonight is to listen to uh, citizens' comments as to put as we develop the uh, plan in the next coming months. We'll have another public ha hearing uh, next year. Uh, what I'll do is first turn it over to uh, Wilma Conyers, Ms. Wilma Conyers, to uh, read the details into the record uh, before we get, begin the public hearing. Thank you very much. Ms. Conyers. Welcome, Ms. Conyers. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Shule, <coughs> members of City Council, Wilma Conyers, Federal Programs Coordinator. The purpose of this public hearing is to receive citizen comments on the community development needs in Durham communities as it relates to the use and receipt of Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, Home Investment Partnership, Home, Emergency Solutions Grant, ESG, and Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS, HOPWA Funds. This public hearing is a requirement for the preparation and submission of the city's fiscal 2019-2020 annual action plan. Notice of this pro um, Notice of this hearing was properly advertised in the Herald Sun, K Pasa, and Carolina Times newspapers, as well as via a general listserv and the department's website. As a recipient of CDBG Home, ESG, and HOPWA funds, the city is required to hold at least two public hearings prior to the submission of the annual action plan. The first meeting must be held early in the developmental stage of the plan. We anticipate the second public hearing will be held in March or April of 2019. In addition to the city, in addition, the city is required to publish a copy of the annual action plan for at least 30 days prior to its submission. The city's annual action plan is due to HUD by May 15th. The Department of Housing and Urban Development has not yet announced the FY 2019 entitlement allocations. We anticipate those allocations will be announced in the spring of 2019. For planning purposes, the city expects to receive approximately 1.9 million in CDBG funds, 1 million in home, 160,000 in ESG, and 370,000 in HOPWA funds. In closing, a summary of comments from this public hearing and written comments received from citizens during the development of the action plan will be incorporated into the final 2019-2020 annual action plan. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Conyers. This is a public hearing, and we have two people who have signed up to speak. Larissa Seibel and Muna Mujahid. And if you all would please proceed over here to this uh, side of the room. And uh, you each have three minutes. Please state your name and address and welcome. If you don't mind uh, passing this along and along to staff too. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Larissa Seibel, 2410 Park Place. And I'm here to thank the city council and staff from the Coalition for Affordable Housing and Transit. Uh, we did this last year, and this year we've had an amazing year with some very important steps towards affordable housing. And we're very, very proud of the cities working with the whole community so all of us can afford affordable housing in the near future. <laughs> we do have a lot more to do. And uh, we're taking these steps to preserve and create affordable housing around transit. And we know the city is making affordable housing a priority with our public land, with developments, and with funds. And in fact, tomorrow, I think we'll be talking about your policy about making sure that city land is prioritized for affordable housing whenever possible. Um, we have some specific things that we've worked with you on um, together, building affordable apartments at the Durham Station. So important to have 
extremely low-income people who need both affordable housing and transit to be right there at the bus station. Uh, finding developers to build significant affordable housing at the old police headquarters, again, right there at the bus and train stations. Renovating housing with the Durham Housing Authority and supporting nonprofits to build and repair homes. And um, the police department reminded me also those that you support who do the things you may not see every day to serve people. The services that we provide to people who are homeless and transitioning into housing is so important. And helping longtime residents stay in their homes, we wanna keep working with you on that as well as all these other things. And I know you'll hear from um, Peach and other groups about applying for lead and healthy homes funds to make homes safe for children. So we really in, um, look forward to another year of working with you, of expanding the work that we have done together. And we hope to house every person in safe, quality, affordable housing in Durham in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for the partnership of all the groups that you recommend, rep represent. Hi, good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> Could you state your name and address? My name is Muna Mujahid, 10100 Stallion Way, Bahama, North Carolina. Um, I came tonight, I've been working, I used to work on affordable housing in this community for over 25 years. And I came tonight uh, to ask you, and I guess to beg you, to really, really consider being honest about what we're trying to, what you have done to the citizens in Durham, not you necessarily per se. But when I look at all the growth and the development downtown Durham and people are so happy, my heart breaks because I've been out here for 25 years fighting for people to have affordable housing and it's just like one day I looked up and the board was here and it just took over. And I'm not a person that's against development for people, but I, my thought is people want to say Bill Bell did this, they want to point the finger, but a whole lot of people conspire to make sure we're where we are right now with affordable housing in Durham. This is not a problem that just came up yesterday. People saw this coming. People tried to pretend it didn't come. And just as much as all those buildings are down there, my thought is this. If people come here with all the money that they have and we're so prosperous, why can't there be some kind of partnership with those people that have all the excess? Why can't they be asked or almost demanded to build for people that don't have? You know, I'm just a regular person, and I'm at a point in my life, I'm 60 years old, been doing housing work for years, and I can't even afford to live in, the, in, in this city anymore. And when I see people out here with mental health issues and other kinds of things, and apartments are 1400 these are mortgage prices for people. So again, they're gonna be some of us, I look at Larissa and many of us who've been out here for years, I don't wanna die fighting this fight. And you know, so we're putting on one face in the public, oh, we're so wonderful, and then we have all these people that have no place to live. We have to do better, and that's why I'm here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and we now have Jarvis Martin. Mr. Martin, if you could state your name and address. And you have three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Jarvis Martin, I reside at 3608 Mossdale Avenue here in Durham. And I'm here tonight, uh, first of all, to thank the council and all of you for your efforts that you have put into affordable housing because there is a tremendous need. But also I want to call to your attention as we look towards the efforts of building new affordable housing that we have to keep an eye on the affordable housing that we have. And I'm here tonight speak, to speak specifically about a venture that I'm involved in and thankful to the city council past who participated with us and that is the Stewart's Heights, Stewart Square community. That is, in 2020, we're going to have 54 of those units, and in, in, in succession years coming forth, uh, another 40 and another 24 of those units. That's going to be coming uh, due in terms of our investors who uh, their 15-year period is going to be up. So I definitely want to call that to the attention of the council. As you look forward, we've had some preliminary conversation uh, with Mr. Johnson and his department but it is our desire and hopefully that the council will keep an eye on the fact that we need to also be mindful of keeping those properties that are currently serving the needs of our community and providing uh, decent and safe affordable housing uh, to the community that we are at a point now where we're gonna have to refocus on those and try to put forth uh, the necessary resources to keep those properties affordable. Because those investors that we are talking to they know what's going on in the Triangle. They know what's going on in Durham. And all of them 
uh, see an opportunity for them to exit, and they want to exit. They do not plan to try to stay on for another 15 years. And, but we would like to, myself and my partner, to make certain that the council is aware of that and that these units uh, can remain affordable. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Is there anyone else that would like to speak at this public hearing? Is there anyone here that would like to speak at this public hearing? Let me just say uh, to all, the, all three of the speakers that came, we take your concern very serious. Uh, Ms. Mujahid, um, thank you for your words. We understand the, the uh, situation that we're facing in Durham. And we all know that while many of our residents are prospering with our newfound prosperity, there are many that are not. And we are, I can tell you that I and many people up here work on this every single day and take it very, very seriously. Uh, we are spending a lot of money and a lot of effort uh, to try to build and preserve affordable housing, and we will continue to, and I'm sure we'll be increasing those efforts. Your words are not lost on us, and I want you to know that. Mr. Martin, thank you for being here. Uh, as you may be aware that one of the council's priorities in affordable housing is the preservation of existing affordable units, and especially those units which are coming out of their mandatory period of affordability, such as the units that you described. So I appreciate that you've already begun uh, discussions with our uh, community development department. Uh, I know that they will uh, try to work with you uh, because that is one of our priorities, and uh, we appreciate your uh, bringing that to us. Thank you so much. All right, any other one, any, anyone else that would like to speak at this public hearing? Anyone else? Any council member comments, questions? Council member Freeman. Thank you. Um, I also want to echo the mayor and recognizing that I really appreciate the work that both um, Ms. Seibel and Ms. Muna have been doing in this community for longer than 25 years. And uh, I want to make sure that I press upon that it's not just housing that's the issue and that as a council, we've recognized that that shared prosperity is not there and it's because income is the issue. And so we have to focus more on how we increase income opportunities beyond just jobs um, for folks of color specifically because that's where the, the hardest hit community is. It's black and Latino specifically and I'm not blinded by what has happened. I'm very clear and which is, which is hugely a part of why I sit here today. Um, it's important to make sure that we're working at this from all angles and I wanna make sure that I impress upon both of you to stay engaged because I know that you have a, a wealth of wisdom and experience and knowledge that we do not have. And I'll repeat that, we do not have. And if you walk away or you decide to stop, we will lose. So, and then also to Mr. Jarvis, I, I really appreciate you bringing up Stewart and um, Stewart's Height and Stewart Square. I also want to bring up, make sure we're pointing to places like the community builders sites in East Durham as well. <coughs> there are multiple sites throughout the city that have affordable housing that if we don't focus our attention on making sure that the repairs and maintenance is maintained, it won't be affordable in any way, shape, or form. It'll look a lot like what we're doing at, at the bus station right now. And it'll be far more expensive than it should be. So I just want to make sure that we're, we're clear that of what your comments are. I really appreciate you sharing them this evening. And uh, I, want to, I want to hope that there's more people saying the same thing at the next hearing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council Member. Are there any other comments? If not, I'm going to declare this public hearing closed. Uh, I do not believe that we need to take any action tonight uh, other than to have the hearing. So thank you very much, Ms. Conyers and Mr. Johnson. I will now move to item 19, the resolution approving the issuance of the, by the Arizona Industrial Development Authority of its Student Housing Revenue Bonds Provident Group North Carolina Central University Project Series 2018. Welcome, Mr. Boyd. Good evening, Mayor, Member of City Council. I'm David Boyd, Finance Director. Uh, this public hearing is being held pursuant to the Federal Tax Equity and Fiscal Responsibility Act which requires the city council to approve the issuance of any tax exempt bonds within the city's jurisdiction. This hearing has been properly advertised and an affidavit of publication is on file with the clerk. The issuance at hand is by the Arizona Industrial Development Authority for the benefit of North Carolina Central University's student housing project in an amount not to exceed $130 million. The city is not financially responsible for repayment of the debt and the city council's consideration of this resolution is required only due to federal tax law in order for the borrower to access the tax exempt market. Additional details regarding a transaction have been provided to you. Uh, representatives from the university are here and I'm happy to any questions, answer any questions that you all might have. 
Thank you so much. Uh, we're now going to, uh, you've, you've, we've heard from staff, and now I'm going to open the public hearing. And I'm, I, I see that we have one person signed up, uh, Akua Matherson. Did I get that name right? Right. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item as Ms. Matherson comes up? Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item? Welcome, Ms. Matherson. Uh, we're glad to have you. Could you give us your name and address? And you have uh, three minutes. Uh, my name is Akua Matherson, and um, I reside in Greensboro. However, I work for North Carolina Central University, so my address for these purposes are 1801 Fayetteville Street. Um, I don't have any comments. I misunderstood the process. Um, I'm available to answer any Great. questions should you have them. Thank you. That's, we appreciate your being here. Is there anyone else who would like to comment on this public hearing item? Anyone else? If not, I'm going to declare that this public hearing is closed and the matter is back before the council to adopt a resolution approving the issuance of these bonds. Move the resolution. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt the resolution. And I'm uh, going to ask Madam Clerk to please open the vote. Please close the vote. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. Thank you, Ms. Matherson. We appreciate your being here. Now we'll have one more item, uh, which is item eight, which is pulled from the consent agenda. Uh, item eight is a proposed lease for Durham District Number Three substation at 10 Consultant Place. And we have two speakers on this item, Reginald Thompson and Trevor Wells. And uh, if you all both could come over here to my right, that would be great. And welcome. Uh, you each have three minutes. Um, if you could give us your name and address, that would be great. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Reginald Thompson, and I am speaking as a grad student at North Carolina Central University. I fully support the police department substantial and whatever else is necessary for the Durham police to properly do their jobs. But I come before you today to address the shooting death of DeAndre Ballin. I'm here to talk about the incident and how it affected the North Carolina Central University community. It has shattered our peace and made us feel vulnerable. Campus Crossing as a corporate apartment community for students has done nothing to address or explain this incident to us or ask us about our concerns. We are nothing more than dollar signs to them. Consequently, I and many students respectfully ask that the Durham Police refer this investigation to the State Bureau of Investigation so that the community could have confidence in the findings and release the autopsy. Knowing DeAndre as an upcoming college graduate whose life was cut down by the something senseless has left not only the school, but the community in shock and disbelief. I acknowledge and understand that the family would be speaking to the city manager, and I learn and I am on board with that decision. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Thank you very much, Mr. Thompson. Um, and uh, I'll comment on that after we hear from Mr. Wells. Mr. Wells, you also have three minutes. If you could give us your name and address, please. Good evening. Um, my name is Trevor Wells, and I reside at 909 Cook Road. Um, I first addressed the council on this issue on October 1st. It's now been six weeks. Uh, those of us in the NCCU community are concerned about the length of this investigation. We are concerned that there does not appear to be any uh, seriousness with regard to this investigation. We are concerned that the person who shot and killed one of our students uh, was questioned and let go that night, and we still don't know the identity of that person. We are concerned based on things that have happened in the community with regard to uh, shootings at, uh, a shooting at uh, McDougal Terrace. Uh, the autopsy and the SBI investigation and the subsequent reasons not to charge in that incident were very concerning. And the length of this investigation does not lend to confidence. We are asking that this community take this process seriously. When someone discharges a weapon, when a police officer discharges a weapon, he's benched. The 
security guard in this incident went back to work within either a day or a week, depending on the news source that you read. Campus Crossing has not addressed this incident. The security company has stood behind its uh, code words of fearing for one's life. This young man was someone who faculty members vouched for on television. This young man was someone who was loved, respected, and someone who was going to make a contribution. And if it were a situation similar to this that happened at Duke University, and a Duke University student was killed, this would not be the response. We respectfully ask that the Durham Police Department refer this investigation to the State Bureau of Investigation, and that they release the autopsy report, and that those findings be made public so that we can have confidence that this investigation was made uh, in the way that it should be. Because in this community, that does not always happen. And just to say this, my interactions with the Durham Police Department have for the most part been positive. I've been in a couple of emergency situations and they handled themselves with decorum and with professionalism. But in this instance, don't feel that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you hearing from you very much, Mr. Wells. First, I want to uh, ask the city manager to uh, give us an update on what he knows about the state of the investigation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I see, I see Chief Service is still here as well. He may want to, uh, to comment on anything I missed up. And as we've told uh, a, a number of, uh, of the uh, Ballard uh, family, uh, we also are, are very uh, concerned about the length of time that uh, the, uh, the matter has been under review. Uh, it is something that is still under investigation. No final decisions have been made, but we are continuing to await the results of a number of, uh, of lab tests. Uh, and it is ironic that uh, the reference to turn the matter over to the SBI is what is being requested when in fact, that's the group we're waiting to hear from. We have, uh, we have been waiting for many, many weeks. We are very frustrated by the, uh, the time that it has taken uh, for those results to be uh, to be brought forth. Uh, it is a matter that I believe the uh, district attorney and the district attorney elect are uh, also continuing to work on. Uh, but until such time as those results uh, are brought forth, uh, the police department is in a position that they can't complete their work and the investigation. And that's that's kind of where it stands. Uh, Chief Sarvis, did I miss anything? If, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Manager. I want to reiterate what the manager said and appreciate both of you all for being here and say to you that we share your frustration with the length of time that this investigation is taking. I, the, your words were very eloquent and the pain that you are feeling uh, is the pain that is pain that is shared by this whole community. Uh, and what you said about this young man and his promise is not something that is lost on us. So we are in the difficult situation that we're, that we're frequently in, you may be surprised to know, with uh, SBI crime lab, uh, uh, the, the period of time it takes them to turn, this, turn around results. That's not unique to Mr. Ballard's case. It's, it's very, very frequent that our, our crime labs at the state level are very underfunded. Uh, and we're frequently not able to get results back in a timely way. In this case, it's you all, his friends and family who are waiting for the results as our community is. But I want you to know that our police department and our city manager and all of us are, as soon as we get those results, uh, our, I know that our police department will move as quickly as possible to make a decision in this case. So I wanna thank you for being here uh, and tell you that we share the concern that you have uh, and uh, if I felt, and I know if the manager felt, that turning this over to anyone else would speed up the investigation, I know that we would do it. But in fact, it's the SBI that we're waiting for. Uh, and uh, that's, that's our difficult situation. But I really appreciate you being here. All right, uh, I'm gonna ask now for a motion on this item. Uh, Councilmember Freeman? Uh, just the 
note. I'm not sure how um, we could go about it, but I think recognizing that this is a very interesting situation that we continuously find us in within the black community, I would love to know if there's a way that we could send a letter maybe to the governor to encourage um, maybe some prioritization in looking at those lab results. I mean, it's there has to be something. Well, I think that what our job is is to try to get a change in the way this is funded. Yes. That's our job. I agree. Uh, not to ask for an exception in this case because almost every case is like this. Uh, and we have... Um, one thing we could do if we wanted to is we could put it in our legislative agenda to ask for increasing funding of the uh, of the labs. I know that the, La the League of Cities has frequently asked for that funding. Uh, we wouldn't be alone in that, and Council Member Middleton represents us in that. Uh, that's something that we could do. So uh, it is a tremendous problem, and uh, I agree we should continue to speak out on it. Thank you. So why don't we think about that for our legislative agenda. Um, Council Member Austin. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I will now ask for a motion on item eight to authorize the city manager to execute the five-year lease. So moved. Sorry. And moved and seconded. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. The motion passes seven zero. Thank you. I believe that is all the uh, all that it, all that the business that come before this body. I just want to say to uh, my colleagues uh, and everyone who remains here today, staff and others, uh, we're approaching the Thanksgiving holiday. And um, I just am very appreciative that this, thinking about this tonight uh, up here, that uh, very, very thankful for each of you and the tremendous work that all of you all do. Uh, Mr. Manager, Mr. Attorney, Madam Clerk, and all of my council colleagues, uh, our staff members here today, we're very, very lucky in the city of Durham, and I'm very grateful for all of you all. So happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Uh, to my council colleagues, uh, unfortunately for us, before we go off for Thanksgiving, <laughs> I will see you all tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock for a very long agenda. I have to go home and, and get reading. So uh, this meeting is adjourned at 9 o'clock.